as I was preparing this homily, I was largely looking at queer history as a way of locating ancestors, but I believe this an expansive understanding of ancestors can be beneficial for anybody who has felt dislocated from family, who, when reflecting on the people for whom we come from, we may not feel like they're in, like their wildest dreams, but they're a terrifying nightmare. I look at my own personal ancestry, my family back in East Tennessee, and for the longest time, you watch the, the time for all ages about keeping secrets, I know that song in my own heart the hiding and the pain that that can cause, and the unexpected joy that can happen in a heart when we're surprised that love is still there. We reveal our authenticity. We are true to ourselves and honest with others, perhaps for the first time. And that is not everyone's experience, though. And so the idea of reflecting on ancestors can be painful. The past couple of days, I was at the Luminarium for a dialogue with interfaith leaders and scientists exploring the intersections of religion and nature and frequently we were considered we were asked to consider our ancestors and to call them into the space and for me this didn't feel too hard but for some people this was challenging because their ancestors as they were using that term did not feel like people that were safe for them and that's a great tragedy of our time but perhaps is it possible that we may take a more expansive approach to this idea of ancestry, not so much just our bloodline or who we are descended from directly. And while this is one thing, I believe ancestry and ancestors are simply this. Who do you come from? Who do you belong to? Who do you come from and who do you belong to? And for LGBT people in general, and especially, can be really important to find that legacy and locate ourselves in something broader than ourselves because so many of us bear the wounds of being pushed out of families, being told no, you can't come to Thanksgiving dressed like this or with this person or holding hands in public. The shame, the shame can gnaw away at our hearts until we forget who we really are. Beautiful, precious, children of the cosmos, children of humanity, the broader human condition who want what just about everyone has always wanted, and that is to belong. I cannot speak to the needs of every human spirit. That's a challenge of being a Unitarian Universalist minister. We can't speak to everyone's needs because we're necessarily pluralistic, but I do believe that if there's one thing that the heart yearns for across traditions, across kinds and creeds, race, ethnicity, all throughout human history, we have wanted to belong and why we are social animals, friends, straight up social animals, just evolved from primates who needed one another to survive, to thrive. And so it is with us as well. The lone wolf idea of humanity is broken. I might even call in ancestors of our own, like Ralph Waldo Emerson, a person who we may connect the transcendentalist movement too is part of the legacy and the heritage and the ancestors of Unitarian Universalism. If you are a Unitarian Universalist, this is part of our heritage too, part of our ancestry. And yet this edge of our ancestry also promoted a lot of ideas about self-reliance and individualism, which are not always bad, but when taken to extremes can separate us from one another. As Mark Morrison Reed said, central goal of a religious community is what? to unveil the bonds that bind each to all, to show that we need one another. We've always needed one another. To find our ancestry as LGBT people in relationship to the past, you may say Marsha Johnson or Harvey Milk or Stonewall, or all the nameless people who have gone before, who lived and loved and lost, and left us a legacy, nameless, echoing into the future. We may look at the Kanars of India and the Hijra of India, third gender people who have a religious function in their system, especially before British colonialism or the eunuch priests of Kaibali. <laughs> there are so many possibilities. But even in places where there was massive secrecy and oppression, well, trust we were there too. We've always been here, friends. 
And we don't always pass on progeny of our own. Sometimes I grieve myself when I hear the laughter of children to know that I will not have children of my own. And then I hear them screaming and I breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> the grief and relief play together, friends. We do have hearts that are big enough for all of this, right? All of this is holy now. But I also remember that I am very fortunate that I get to touch lives in a way that not many people get to, but indeed we all carry a ministry for and of children. Every one of us, every single one of us is called to the care of children and becoming ancestors ourselves someday, whether that is through blood. If you have children, hallelujah, thank you. And thank you for bringing them to a place where love can be spoken and proclaimed loudly and proudly. They can become whoever they will be knowing that they are loved. And if you don't, friends, I invite you to do the work. It can be messy and honestly sticky. I mean that literally and figuratively. Um, I was a youth minister for a while, so I, I know it's what that's like, but we're all called to that work, right? There are ways to engage with that in the church. We may be involved with the RE or the youth group, or we might just be kind to the children that come to this congregation. We might just open our hearts to realize that it does take a village and we are a village connected interwoven as we are moving into the future and in the future well how do we stay with the trouble of our times how do we grapple with the grief of climate change how do we look at our children how do we be children as the world gets warmer as wars rage as things fall apart and the center cannot hold Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. What does it mean? How, we, how may we make that highway where love can find easy motion? Well, for all of us, whether we're having children or not, whether we are LGBT or not, whether we consider ourselves Unitarian Universalist or not, I imagine that we may stay at the table, we may stick with the trouble. We may, in the words of Donna Haraway, make kin. Donna Haraway is a philosopher of the 20th century, still to the present, writing, wondering, how do we move into the future? Donna identifies the Anthropocene, this big idea about the time, the epoch of our earth, where humanity is affecting so many things. And she says, yes, this is true. But she proposes a different term, which is a fun word, the Chulacene, borrowed from H.P. Lovecraft's tentacle monster, as a way of looking at the connections we have with plants and animals and technology all woven together into this messy tentacular thing. Nobody knows where it's going. Nobody knows how integrated technology will affect our culture and our future. It is mysterious. Nobody knows what will happen if we lose critical species, butterflies, and bees, coyotes. Nobody knows, but we go together. We go together. We move into the mystery together, friends. It is not so easy as to have a pie in the sky ultimate truth that will inevitably be broken. We must embrace that the ancestry, the ancestors we will become, will necessarily be shaped by this tentacular reality and all of its possible futures. And so Donna suggests making kin, especially if we are not ones who can make babies. Make kin can across lines of difference, across lines of perhaps misunderstanding, coming together, weaving ourselves together to share and to grow and to hold up this precious life that we have, this one blue boat home that we know to build a land where justice and freedom and singing can be heard. And I invite you into that journey, friends, to make kin here, to know the names of the ones who take care of you, to weave y'all's lives together. There are opportunities for community care. There are opportunities to visit those who can't come here. There are opportunities to share and to be served in turn. Love abounds here, friends. In this tradition, long back before the transcendentalists to this day, and we move on into the future. So as we move into our final hymn, come and go with me to that land. I invite you to consider the kind of land we're coming to, the kind of land we're building, the futures we will create, the heritage we will leave behind, the kind of ancestors you will become.